You've probably seen this busker all over your TikTok page over the past month and he's gotten really popular for his performances outside the cafe over the weekends. And it seems like his shows were getting really popular because he was drawing in thousands of people into his audience. There were tons of people gathered just to watch this guy perform and it seemed like things were going well for a while until they didn't. And we're going to talk about all of it today. But before that, don't forget to like and subscribe, it's real simple. All you gotta do is press those buttons down below and best of all, it's free. I mean you don't have to but it would be a lot cooler if you did. So today we're going to talk about this busker called Jeff Ng and how his entire career rose and fell within a couple of days. Now to give you guys some background, it all started back in early June when this busker started performing outside the cafe and his audience grew exponentially over a couple of weeks. And I think there are a couple of reasons as to why this happened and the first one would definitely be because of the return of the busking scene after restrictions have been reduced. Another reason for the huge turnout could be due to the fact that this busker originally had been performing in Chinatown back in 2018 and some of his loyal fans had returned to watch him perform. Adding to this could also be the fact that he often performs many popular Mando Pop songs that appeal to a wide general audience and that could be a reason as to why he drew in such a big crowd. And the final reason for this huge turnout could potentially be because of this partnership he had with a buy now pay later brand who could have definitely given a boost to his audience and turnout. So with all that in mind, his popularity grew pretty quickly and he started to get coverage in the mainstream media as well. And crazy enough, people were queuing in advance to see him perform. They were waiting up to an hour before he would even turn up and they were crowding all over the cathay grounds just to get the best spot to see him perform. Insane. Insane because this is a busking performance and I've never seen people actually sit around and wait like that for a show to start. And when people in the audience were asked whether they would watch this busker perform in a concert and how much they would pay, they had this to say. Up to $400 just to watch this man perform? Those better be cat A seats. I mean, that is pretty pricey. So clearly this guy has some X factor going on to explain all of this, but there's more to the story. At the start of July, his ex-girlfriend, who allegedly was in a relationship with him for about three years, posted a lengthy expose which showed a very different side of him. And I truly mean a lengthy expose because it was written like a master thesis or dissertation about everything that went down between the two of them and not all of it was really good. So I'll spare you the time and effort needed to go through all of that and summarize basically three main points that came up from this expose. Firstly, the ex-girlfriend claimed that this busker was emotionally abusive to her in their relationship and apparently he was love bombing her. And by that she meant that he would call her for up to 8 hours at a time and 95% of the call was him just talking and if he missed one call, he would accuse her of sleeping with a colleague. Like that escalated quickly. Like look at the number of missed calls over here and look at the timestamps. What is going on? And then there's a screenshot where apparently he says, Can you call me back please? Please call me back. Or can you pick up my call? Promise not to scold you. Promise not to scold you? Why would you even say that? She also said that he was pretty controlling in their relationship in that he would blame her for bad things that would happen to him and then would punish her by cutting her off from her friends, restricting her movement, and even getting her to block people that he didn't like. He's also known to make partners kneel or kowtow to him for saying or doing something wrong. For example, liking another singer's post or following someone that he didn't like. Like in this screenshot over here, she mentioned that she cannot like other people's pictures and was ordered to unfollow her own friends. This sounds insane if it's all true because this is controlling with a capital C. She also shared that she wasn't allowed to touch his phone but he had the right to check hers anytime. Now that is truly a red flag. And then she said that she had to leave his performances earlier so that female fans wouldn't spot her and get the wrong idea. Now that is pretty messed up. And apparently she also had to deal a lot with him, especially when people in the audience didn't clap when he performed. Insisting that people clap when you perform is very diva behaviour, and I don't know if this busker would qualify for that. And adding to how this relationship was allegedly very emotionally abusive, he apparently would promise her that he would reveal their relationship to everyone, but then when something bad happened or if she did something wrong, he would punish her by choosing not to reveal it. And moving on to the second point, this busker was allegedly a serial cheater as well. Could this story get any worse? Spoiler alert, it does. She alleged that he cheated on her three times and on one of these occasions when she found out who the other woman was, she confronted him about it and then he made her apologize for even bringing it up in the first place and ruining his day. She brought up an example of how on one occasion when he wanted to hide the fact that he had watched a movie with another girl, he decided to watch the same movie with her and then acted as if he was watching it for the very first time. That is some galaxy brain energy. <laughs> And then when she finally broke things off with him, he tried to get her back by spamming her with phone calls and then harassing her until she would reply. And there was a record of 218 missed calls on one night. 
And adding to all these cheating allegations, apparently she was made to wait in another room in his parents' house while he had some other girl he was dating with in his own bedroom and she was not allowed to leave the room at all. She essentially had to hide from the person he was cheating with. Again, this is all very mind-boggling if it's all true. Now you might be wondering why this ex-girlfriend didn't walk away or just leave the relationship sooner but apparently it wasn't so easy according to her. He would often back cry and kneel and swear he would change and then threaten her with suicide attempts and also threaten to ruin his own relationships and blame her for it and even go to the extent of stalking her. The amount of red flags over here is through the roof. It's no longer just red flags. It's a red flag factory. In this screenshot, she mentions that one month after their breakup, she couldn't block him because he would spam her, even though he was already attached. And long after they broke up, he would still text her things like, it's your choice, I tired, again you will regret. This is some villain behaviour. She also mentioned elsewhere that it was difficult for her to break the cycle because she feared incurring his wrath and every call or text that she would receive from him would often trigger panic attacks. Now on to our third and final point. She alleges that he has little empathy for family as well. When his granddad died, apparently he threw up such a big fuss on why his granddad died at the wrong time because they were outside at the carnival and he didn't want to leave. I'm, I'm honestly speechless. I'm too stunned to speak. Now you would think that this expose from the ex-girlfriend would be the worst of it, but no. All it did was broke open the floodgates and allowed more people to come forward with their own stories. There was another singer who came forward to share that no major live bar outlets would dare hire him because he still scolds patrons for making noise during his sets. Now that's really strange, on top of insisting that people clap, you also don't want people to make noise while you're performing, but you're in a live bar setting providing music as part of the atmosphere, people are generally gonna be making noise so the expectation of people being quiet or silent throughout seems a bit unreasonable. Someone else came forward to say that she was allegedly punished by this busker for getting his ex-girlfriend to walk out on him and apparently her air tickets were also sabotaged. It's a whole other story that I don't have enough time to go through. Like, we probably need a six-part Netflix documentary to explain all of this. So with all these stories and allegations coming out, he eventually came forward to apologize in a very vaguely worded statement essentially attributing his past behaviour to him being young and reckless in his 20s, which seems a bit of a cop-out, and also only apologising after all these came to light seems like a case of too little too late. Soon after, he actually decided to cancel one of his shows that following weekend, and some of his fans who weren't aware about this cancellation still showed up and wanted to show their support. Of all the people who turned up even after the show was cancelled, there was one person who had the most hilarious response. Oh my god, I'm not sure what to do and where to go now that his session is cancelled. Oh my god, I'm so sad. I came down specially to see him perform there. Don't you have better things to do? Now this is where things get a little spicy because his wife then came forward to his defence and then mentioned that he is a changed man and could attest to his behaviour. She also made it a point to mention that he is also an extremely filial son-in-law who makes effort to spend time with her parents weekly despite his busy schedule. I think this might be to counter the fact that he allegedly kicked up a big fuss when his granddad passed on, but it doesn't seem to be helping his case. Because after she left this comment, other people came forward and started dragging her in the comments as well. Someone else commented about the wife saying that you are equally arrogant when you treat the retailers, customer service, or frontline. Coming to a retail store, you do not want to join the queue and expect to be attended immediately like your husband. Wow. That's not good. So based on where we are in the story right now, it's already a huge hot mess and it's only gonna get worse. So I'm just gonna go through the remaining items and new allegations that came to light one at a time because there's a lot more, trust me. So I think a big part of why this story initially took off was because of this IG story screen grab going around that was created by this busker and it has a big chunk of text in Mandarin that I do not have time to translate but there's one particular line that I was reading and managed to get hold of the translation to explain exactly why people were so ticked off. So apologies in advance because I'm gonna have to rely on Google Translate for this but in one of the sentences he says you know my strength and genius, all of you who are experts deliberately do not support me as a national treasure. Calling yourself a national treasure? That's a pretty bold statement to make. I mean, terms and conditions would apply, probably a lot more than you would expect. And then he allegedly left the Esplanade a very scathing review, essentially insulting the sound crew and saying things like, I will cut my own lines with Esplanade from today. This coming from a national treasure. How can this be wrong? And then there was this review left by a customer for this KTV and cafe where the busker allegedly performed that. And the review says, The performer yesterday was whining because the audience were not mesmerized during this performance. He was offended with patrons chit-chatting and actually said over the mic that last night was his worst audience for the month of May because people were chatting. Insulting your audience in the middle of your performance? How is that national treasure behavior? 
And then the cafe replied that they are also no longer engaging him. And then cut to a while later where someone claiming to be the fan club admin for this busker who came forward with their story about how they were pulled down for apparently supporting singers that this busker hated. The fan club admin shared that they could only post the busker stuff on IG stories and that when the busker sang at pubs and cafes, he insisted that people clap for him after he was done singing. If not, after the performance, he would stomp off. This busker is really something. I mean, what that is, I have no idea. Then there was a screenshot going around of this particular exchange between the busker and a fan who had apparently unfollowed him. As I saw you just unfollow me, but maybe it's an accidental, so if you can help me by telling me the truth so I can figure out it's IG errors or human errors, thank you. The passive aggressiveness is real. Don't take it the wrong way, I unfollow you because I want to and personally I don't even know you. Thanks for your reply, then why you follow me at first? I'm alright with any answers but you choose wait and wait and wait until I type out your truth answer. I already know you unfollow me once after you've seen and not replying. Cry laughing emojis. Um, is this man alright? Coming after people who unfollow you one at a time, does he do this for everybody that unfollows him? Seems like a lot of time and effort that could be better spent elsewhere, like, I don't know, performing. Whether I want to reply is my problem. Okay, bye. I know you will reply that, haha, it's your problem in future. You will eventually meet what kind of kid will treat you the same way you treat others as kids always have 50% of parents' genes. You will know what I mean when you grow up. I hate liars. Liar kid! <laughs> this is the ramblings of a madman. There's no other explanation for that. And then there was this moment that was captured in the middle of one of his performances during a live stream. Again, the passive aggressiveness just jumped out. Can you imagine if I did that in my videos? Guys, the video's about to start. I need you all to settle down. Okay, focus, focus. All right, everyone look at me. One silent clap. Good. All right, the video's about to start. If you want to talk, go ahead. You can talk. I'll just stop. I'll just end the video over here. Okay? I hated that. I hated every moment of that. And then comes the icing on this shit show of a cake. Apparently this busker was accused of buying followers. Like how many controversies does he want to have? Why is he collecting so many like Pokemon? This guy seems to be doing a career rise and fall speed run. I don't know why, nobody asked. But it's just getting out of hand. He posted an IG story with some clarification, something to the effect of how there were probably some bot accounts that were following him and he's not so sure how to stop them. I mean, anyone can buy followers for any sort of account, so that is all up in the air. But... It's kind of sus when you look at the numbers because his follower count jumped by such a huge margin on the same day that the expose from his ex-girlfriend dropped. I mean, correlation does not equal causation, but something is definitely up. So that's where we are in the story right now, and I'm curious to hear what you guys think about it in the comments below because there's some people who claim that this could all be part of a smear campaign just as this guy was getting popular with his performances at the Cathay. Now, I'm not sure what to make of this because looking at all the stories that have come out so far, there are definitely many similarities and common traits between them to show us that not as all as it seems. But whatever the case is, it's pretty clear that the damage has already been done and if this busker still insists on people applauding for his performance, then all I gotta say is... Good job. You know, of all the busking performances that I could see at the Cathay right now, this is the only one I wanna see. You know what, I want you guys to comment down below and shout out any local busker who you feel truly deserves our applause because I'm pretty sure there are many out there that need our support right now. That's the end of the video. It's been quite a trip and I hope you guys like and subscribe. Otherwise, I will personally find each and every one of you and ask you why you never like and subscribe. Just kidding. Unless... YOLO Say no no YOLO YOLO You only live once